bloodthirsty adversary. Franklin Pierce then. Just live through this turn. No blockers, right? Wow, that was tight. Hey friends, today we are going to talk about a deck that I thought was going to be dead, but I think it actually has some life to it. And that deck is Mono Blue. I don't know. Mono Blue? What do they call it? Mono Blue Tempo. Uh, Mono Blue. It's a like tap out, but also sometimes it's draw go, sometimes it's tap out. Mono Blue. Um, today we're going to play some ladder matches. Uh, it's the first day. They reset the, the ladder standing, so I'm back down to Platinum. Got to climb that ladder again, and I'm going to start the ladder climb with Mono Blue. Michael J, 30 seconds ago, you told us that Mono Blue was dead. I said, no, I thought it might be dead, but I think it has some life to it. And it has some upgrades. So it used to play this card called Essence Scatter, right? So I think the card Scatter Ray is just better than Essence Scatter for the most part, right? So uh, Scatter Ray is from, not from the new set, right? But it's, it is a pretty new card, but it's not from the new set. It has the, the text, counter target artifact or creature spell, unless it's a controller pays four. It's not an unconditional counter spell of creatures like Essence Scatter, but like paying four is a, is a high bar. Uh, but it also counters artifacts. So if your opponent plays a second turn Blood Tithe Harvester, Scatter Ray can counter that just like Essence Scatter could. But if they play a second turn Reckoner Bank Buster, you can also counter that. And let me tell you, you're more likely to lose to a Reckoner Bank Buster than you are to a... Uh, uh, to a Blood Tithe Harvester on the second turn, just so you know. Um, but there's another substantial upgrade, I think, to Essence Scatter. So folks used to play like four Essence Scatter in this deck, uh, which is Assimilate Essence. This is from the new set. This is from March of the Machine. It says counter target creature or battle spell, unless it's controlled with pace four. If they do, you incubate two. So this is to battles what Scatter Ray is to artifacts, but if they pay, then you also get to incubate two, which is which is not good, right? Like you wanted to counter their battle, you wanted to counter their their creature, but you got a little something if they paid. So that's pretty good. Um, if Scatter Ray was better than Essence Scatter, which I think that it is when I'm playing Scatter Ray, then Assimilate Essence definitely is because at least me and all the videos I watch and all the playing I do myself. I think more people play more battles right now than people are playing just main deck artifacts. So I think Assimilate Essence is a little bit better if people are playing more battles than they are playing artifacts. Also, if it's a late game situation, you try to counter their shielder and they have like 15 mana open or whatever, at least you got to incubate two. So slight upgrade on that. Slight upgrade on Assimilate Essence, slight upgrade on, on Scatter Ray. But here's the big card, and this is the reason that I wanted to make this video. This is the reason why I wanted to feature Mono Blue at all. Since 1997, since the year 1997, maniacs like me have been going around saying that Impulse was the best card in Magic. If you go back on the Usenet news groups, um, Usenet news groups from like the mid to late 1990s, there's all kinds of stuff of me and my teams back then talking about how much we liked Impulse. Uh, Impulse is not the best card in Magic. But we liked it a lot, and uh, it saw a ton of play back in 1997. It sees a ton of play now. I cut all the impulses out of my mono blue deck, and I replaced them with this card, Moment of Truth. Moment of Truth only looks at the top three cards. So Impulse looks at the top four. Moment of Truth looks at the top three cards. But instead of putting all three that you don't take on the bottom of your library, it only puts one on the bottom of your library and puts one in the graveyard. So this card is slightly worse, and it's actually meaningfully worse if you need to dig for a land on turn two. It's meaningfully worse than that. It's also meaningfully worse if you're digging for a specific spell. So uh, if you're playing in a control deck, like a, a traditional blue-white control deck, that you need to dig for a Wrath, I think Impulse is probably better, right? So I play a lot of this format called Pre-Modern, and there's a tension in Pre-Modern between 
the the card impulse and the card um, uh, accumulated knowledge. Accumulated knowledge only draws one, but sometimes it draws four, right? So there's tension there, but the decks that play impulse usually want to dig to a specific card. They want to dig to a Wrath of God, for example. So this is worse at digging for a specific card. So you might not want to play it in the combo deck. But in mono blue, whatever we're calling this, mono blue tempo, mono blue, let's call this mono blue graveyard, right? It's not even mono blue reanimator, but it's mono, mono blue graveyard. Both the card Haughty Jin and the card Talarian Terror profit substantially by having instants and sorceries in the graveyard. You will see in the matches that we have how profoundly more powerful Moment of Truth is than Impulse for enabling a card like Talarian Terror. So if you cast like an Impulse, you put one sorcery or instant into the graveyard. If you cast Moment of Truth, you often will put two in. So it's like doubling the speed with which you can get Talarian Terror down to, to one casting cost. And that is a big deal in this deck. So the way this deck works is it's always behind to begin with, especially if it's going second, right? It's going second, it always has to catch up. It has to throw away cards like Fading Hope just to not get run over. And then it plays like a stabilizing creature, hopes that creature lives, untaps, and then tries to take over the game with card drawing and counter spells. But guess getting to the point where you have that creature to stabilize, speeding that process up is really meaningful for this deck. Also, doubling the speed with which you double the power of Haughty Jin just doubles how quickly you can kill the opponent. This is not a deck that's going to sit there and counter spell forever. Your job is to get Haughty Jin in play, untap successfully with Haughty Jin, and attack the opponent like twice, right? You want to get to seven power, 10 power, just two swings in, finish the game. This card, Moment of Truth, I hope, I mean, who knows, but I hope we're going to see in the upcoming matches that this card is the real deal for Mono Blue. And that's the reason why I wanted to test it for, for Ladder right now. Uh, let's talk about the sideboard for a second. Um, the biggest question mark for Mono Blue, I think, is Lithomantic Barrage. I think Lithomantic Barrage is bananas good. Uh, I, I have four of them in my Jeskai sideboard. Uh, we looked at a Grixis deck a couple of days ago, and I think that I'm going to... I mean, I, okay, Invoke Despair never even came in in any of our Grixis testing, right? So that's at least going to become a Lithomantic Barrage. Um, Lithomantic Barrage... You cast it at a Talarian Terror, you don't even have to pay the ward, right? You cast it at a Haughty Jin, they have to have a slip out the back or a Fading Hope because they can't counter it, right? That guy's just going to die. So they need to they need to either phase it out or bounce it back to their hand. That card is dumb powerful. Uh, it, specifically in matchup, right? It's a one for one. It's like, It just kills a creature. But this deck has eight creatures. They're high leverage creatures. If you kill eight creatures, it's really hard for them to win. You got like a Blue Sun's Twilight. So one of the strategies that people have is to play additional creatures in their sideboard. Um, you know, if you're playing against like Grixis, Rakdos, Mono Black Control, uh, the card cut down is pretty bad in game one. It is highly unusual for a cut down to be able to kill a Haughty Gen, and it can never kill a Talarian Terror, right? Unless something really weird is going on. Like maybe the Talarian Terror got beat up by multiple, multiple blood tokens or something, then maybe you could cut it down but it's really unusual for cut down to have any text in this matchup so i think people have a tendency to take out cut down one strategy is to bring in a creature that could be cut down that's also cheaper that you could be willing to tap out for on turn one or two so some people bring in delver of secrets right so uh, i used to play four delver in my main deck um i think that the delver builds are really erratic uh in main deck anyway and once flow of knowledge got printed I became a flow guy. I think flow is a transformative card for the archetype. But I do think you want to bring in more creatures in general. And uh, you want to bring in creatures that can be cut down because the suspicious people will be taking out specifically cards like cut down. And I think suspicious stowaway is a good card to play, especially on the play. So I would sideboard differently on the play or on the draw, but a lot of decks I just be willing to cast a stowaway on turn two and hope to untap with it. Um, you can control it becoming night. It's up to you. Uh, and then rock and roll when it's nighttime, right? You have an unblockable the guy and just Aphidian's the opponent. Uh, Suspicious Sowe on the front side is not that exciting. 
But the other option is just like Delver of Secrets, which is also just a 1-1 that sometimes flips. Uh, but it's not even clear which one's better once it's flipped. I think Suspicious Stowaway is, A, it's by definition harder to block. It hits only a little less hard. It has one less power. But if you start hitting someone with it, man, you're just going to have a grip full of counter spells. So there's a Suspicious Stowaway. Um, I have one blue sun Twilight in my main deck. I was looking over decks on MTG Goldfish, and some people have as many as three copies of Blue Suns Twilight in their main deck. Um, I think that's maniacal, crazy. Uh, I play three flow instead. I used to play two flow, so I could totally see playing like two flow or two or three. Blue Suns Twilight, it's just like a question of which expensive cards you want. But this card isn't even always expensive, right? So uh, this card is outstanding against Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Uh, you just tap two and you steal their Goblin Shaman, and they now have to deal with their Goblin Shaman, right? So it's the same mana as, uh, you know, somebody go for the throating a Goblin Shaman. We all do that, like, Goblin Shaman, go for the throat every single time. Don't even think about it. So this is outstanding against Fable the Mirror Breaker. Also gives you another way to win against people who have Lithomantic Barrage. Uh, and then Invoke the Winds. You could play a fourth Blue Suns Twilight, but I have one Invoke the Winds, and I'll tell you why. Uh, it steals artifacts, <laughs> so it might come up. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I stole a Shieldred this week, and it untapped the Shieldred. That was also pretty good, right? So the Shieldred is beating me up. I stole the Shieldred is untapped, and then like now they had to think about how to get past their own Shieldred. So that's pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't side this in against, like, I don't know, Esper Legends or something probably. Maybe because they have Shieldred, but, like, um, decks that have Thalia, I probably wouldn't want to side this in, but I think like there are some decks that have really expensive creatures, uh, and you could cast this for four. It untaps the creature, and sometimes you steal an artifact. That's those are all pretty good. So I have stowaways, those. If I can extra negate, it's fine. Most of the most of the sideboard cards are just like weird small tweaks on cards you have in the main deck. Negate, you have that as the main deck card. There's like not four negates or four essence scatter between deck and sideboard in this build. Uh, I have a fourth flow. You might think I'm a maniac. I have brought the fourth flow in many times against like decks that you're going to play a long, long game against. Uh, Disdainful Stroke is mostly against like rampy type decks. So if the decks that play like uh, Invasion of Zendikar, you always want to have Disdainful Stroke against because those people are casting a card, like, they're casting a battle that costs four, and then they're casting cards after the battle that typically cost more than four, right? So that's the reason why they played the battle. So uh, Disdainful Strokes against those people. Also, people who are like Shieldred, Kiritsugun Kyari, uh, Invoke Despair, you know the type. Um, to sample strokes good against them. And then the last card is Change the Equation. And so this should just tell you what Watsi's attitude towards blue versus their attitude towards red is. Red got Lithomantic Barrage. Lithomantic Barrage, um, you know, annihilates every creature in this deck for one mana. Another card that's really good against Thalia, right? Like, it's good across the board. Um, and blue got changed the equation. So this can counter target red or green spell with mana cost six or less. It can't, notably, it can't counter a Titan of Industry, which is green. It can't counter a Traxa, uh, <laughs> which is green, right? Uh, it can, however, counter like... A lot of the mid mid stuff. It can counter a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. It can counter, I don't know, like an Invasion of Regatha. There's a lot of things you can counter with this. I would typically bring, like, so there's some matchups where, like, counters are bad in general, right? Where, like, against a beatdown deck, you're just like, I don't want counters at all. Uh, but you're just stuck with having a bunch of counters in your deck. Like, if you're playing against Mono Red, it's better to have four change the equation than to have, like, a big mix of like scatter ray and negate and maybe make disappear because in the mid game you don't know what they're going to top deck you don't know if they're going to top deck bloodthirsty adversary or they're going to top deck stoke the flames right they could top deck either one of those and if you have the wrong kind of counter spell in your hand you're going to die and if you have the right kind of counter spell in your hand you're going to win so uh change the equation is just like if the only thing that you did was you were swapping out <laughs> a counter spell that counters only half their cards to a counter spell that counters basically all their cards that would be advantageous. So uh, this card is like not really good enough to be a sideboard card, but this is what, you know, blue has in standard right now. 
uh, relative to, again, Lithomantic Barrage, which is insane. Uh, and I think I've probably hammered home the idea that Lithomantic Barrage is really good against this deck, and we're playing with our backs to the wall. And yet, I am super enthusiastic about playing this deck because Moment of Truth is that good. And I can't wait to show you how exciting this card is. Um, and may maybe you're maybe you're not the kind of person who is excited by looking at a box score for a basketball game and counting how many turnovers a really efficient point guard had. But that's the kind of thing that I like about basketball. Uh, maybe you're only excited uh, by, I don't know, Donovan Mitchell's 71-point game or Michael Jordan's flu game or that time LeBron James scored the last 24 points in a playoff game against the Detroit Pistons in um, 2006, 2007. Um, maybe those are the only things that you remember from basketball games. But if you like to look at how many turnovers a really efficient point guard didn't have, Moment of Truth might be the kind of card for you. P.S. If you want to win more at Magic, learn to appreciate when cards like Moment of Truth are even moderately better than staples like Impulse that have been around for a long time because this is the kind of thing you want to be able to identify uh, to take you to the next level in your deck building. Assuming I'm right about it. I guess you, you know, guess you should watch the games and see if I am. See you in a sec. Okay, friends. Virginal season. Bottom of platinum. Had to reset. Reload. Rock on. We're going to give the people what they want. We're going to have some ranked play. Um, hopefully I'll have the wherewithal to make Mythic again. Maybe High Mythic again this month. Love it if you join me on a little bit of the climb. I'll give the people what they want. Did you know that what you wanted was Moment of Truth? What do we got here? Thornwood Falls. This is like one of those things where if you get to the late game, you probably can never lose, but if you went second, you might lose on the second turn. I like not losing on the second turn. Oh, what is this? A poison deck? I'm gonna keep this land. Well, if I knew that I was gonna draw another land, I wouldn't have kept it. A poison deck. Maybe I will lose on the second turn. Maybe I've already lost. I'm a little skittish about tapping down. Franklin Pierce might be what we need. Uh-oh. So, Moment of Truth is showing us how awesome it is. It's going to get us to uh, a blocker for Loaded Contaminator quickly. This is almost online. Uh, if we cast this and we put two cards in the graveyard, we will not have enough. So there's no reason to do this now. We're going to go to 16 life and 3 poison. Uh, hopefully we'll have the resources to get Solarian Terror in the graveyard forthwith, though. Five cards in here is so scary. We are... We are in a lot of trouble, friends. Give me something I can counter. All right. Uh, hopefully this will hold the ground a little bit, but we're... I mean, they could just beat us with uh, March of Swirling Mist. What the heck is this? Proliferate. Mess up Michael J's life. All right, they can pay for Assimilate Essence. If you would proliferate, proliferate twice instead. Remove three counters from among other artifacts, creatures, and planes, walkers to control. Put an indestructible counter on this guy. That's the least of my worries. So, I think we're in an okay fight here. Thirst now. 
probably pitch this. Let's see what we draw. Huh. Yeah, I'll pitch this. We can cast three spells. That Rock Priest is super dangerous. Problem is, he's so cheap. It's going to be hard to assimilate Essence. This spell costs two less if an opponent has three or more poison counters. We have three or more poison counters. I guess that costs two less. <clears throat> Can we bait the opponent into giving us a counter on the Rot Priest? Probably not. They have so much mana. They go to cast like a contaminator, something powerful like this, we could counter that. So we're gonna go on offense soon. I'll keep this. Ugh. I wouldn't have minded that. Attack here. Uh, we can kill him next turn if everything doesn't, if we don't die. I'll allow it. I couldn't have not allowed it, right? I didn't have the slip. Contagious Vorak. One, two, three. They have four up. <coughs> How do we deal with this? How much does this cost? Four? Alright, my plan is to eat a poison counter. So, we'll take a poison from the Rot Priest. They'll proliferate us with the Contagious Vorak. And then I guess their counterplay will be to try to cast the, the this guy, whatever his name is. Tekuthal. Uh, and we'll counter it on the way down. And we'll kill them in two strikes. That's the plan, anyway. Contaminator. No thank you! Only got two cards left. Alright, Jin. Do this right now. Bash. Ugh, this is so dodgy. Can they beat us with Tekuthal and the two cards in their hand? They need a lot of proliferation to beat us. Yeah. I think we got this one. The fact that we have three counter spells up is <laughs> high indication that we might have this one. All right. One card. One of our cards is in a gate. Thinking we're okay. You and you. Let's admit to. I'm just gonna attack. If they have another Odawara, then uh, I'm gonna flow in response to see if we can find the slip or a fading hope for their Tekuthal. Can they beat this 12 coming in?
Dead. You're at 11. This is 12. No, oh, thank you. Pew, 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 pew! This is the definition of a deck that can beat you in turn two. Um, I normally hate Spell Snare, but I think it might be good. What do we think about Stowaway? <laughs> like Stowaway might crush them. All right, change the equation. Half their cards are green. Is that good? Are control magics good? I feel like they're mostly dudes. Uh, they have sp they're mostly dudes, but they have spells. Like, this is weird. Every like everything's good, and I think everything that they have is better than everything we have. That's <laughs> like a bad spot to be in. Um. Okay, make disappear is good because they have both dudes and spells. Uh, I think change the equation has got to be better than negate. Let's go with that. Franklin Pierce, I think, is pretty good because they can cast the Phoresis card on turn two when we're on the draw. Uh, I think we might need slip to get out of things out of the way. Do I want more control magics? Like flow was the ESPN check mark. I don't want, want to cut too many flows. I do think we need to have ways to deal with the rot priest in play. That's the thing I'm worried about. I'll cut this slip for the last blue sun's twilight. And the question is, do I want the other change the equations? And what are they better than? They better than scatter ray. They better than. I don't think they have battles or artifacts. How many phoresis do they have that we want to counter? I'm gonna I'm gonna play two change the equations, and if I don't win game two, I'm gonna evaluate what was bad and put change the equation in. Because like it's weird, it it only counters half their spells. I think like all of like negate Franklin Pierce scatter ray all all counter half their spells. It's like, if you have the appropriate counter spell for the appropriate threat, that's the question. Right, so, no rock priest. Four. Okay. There, it's a 3-3. Three, three. This is an easy decision. The question is, do we just jam here? I'm not going to jam. I think that they're respecting our mana open. We have, we have the resources to just thirst this turn, take three, and then we can fix our hand a little bit and have Haughty Jin open with at least single coverage. Here's your chance to like Phoresis us or something. Memory Deluge? What planet is this? Like, like hard poison memory deluge. Okay. I like our spot. Change the equation. Counter a green spell. Probably have a counter spell back or something. Seems like the kind of thing they would have. Yeah! Resolved. The Contaminator sucks. He's like not as good as Talarian Terror, so that basically means he's not good. Bees contain Vorak. A battle with this guy. I think I'm gonna let him hit me with the Contaminator. 
Like, we have flow next turn. The fact that they let us counter their rock priest seems to indicate that they can't stop us from that. No blocks. This guy's gonna be our rock priest contamination squad forthwith. Yeah, like, alright. Like a bounce spell? Their interplay last game was a bounce spell. And I kind of have to live with that, right? Should I decline this? Oh man, this is too saucy. I'm gonna decline this. Discard Make Disappear and Thirst. Replay Haughty Gen. Play my bloated contaminator containment unit. Battle. The snare was pretty good. It set us back like four man. We would have like flowed this turn already. Experimental augury. All right, we're gonna go to five poison. Maybe we shouldn't have discarded the burst. We have moments still. Like, they need multiple must counter spells in one turn in order to beat us. Is this. This doesn't corrupt us. We are already corrupted. They're dead on board. Feeling okay. They don't know that we don't have any counter spells, but we're, we're pretending like we're playing protect the queen. Brian Kibler taught me that. He taught me some people use their counter spells to stop threats. Some people use their counter spells to force their threats through. What kind of person are you? Um, like they probably have something. Just gonna try this. Sure. I will go to six poison. You have three mana left. I will go to seven poison. You have a G open. First win in. Fierce Awakening. Probably a fierce opponent already on Platinum here on the first day. Shattered Sink. What do we think they've got? Ooh. Esper Control, maybe? Alright, so we need to prioritize land drops. That's a land drop.
We don't have a play until turn three unless they foolishly cast a creature. So prioritizing land drops is important because we need it for cards like Thirst for Discovery. Foolishly cast a creature. Oh, should we have like, like stolen that? Wouldn't that, that have been cool? What's the plan for that? They're going to recast it. We need... We're going to need... Um, six to copy it, right? So we have four already. This will get us some... We could deuce it on the ground. Rafine Scheming Seer. No land. Huh. So, this is one. We just pitch these two considers. That's sweet. Do you like Apple's Fierce Awakening? How? Do you like... I guess we could have slipped that guy. Them apples. We should have slipped that guy, actually. Shieldred, sure. Swing for one. Get a little life gain on Shieldred. And the buff. Land, please. So we can just naturally uh, steal their shield right now. Because Haughty Jin. Really? Take that trade all day. Versus three cards. What do you what could they possibly have? Maybe they have another shield. Right? If they have another shield, right, that would be the reason why. Yep. Land, please. That's okay. What do you got? I'm tapped out. This is the most Mike Flores strategy. People think that Beating down with Monastery Swift Spear is the most Mike Flores strategy. And that is a Mike Flores strategy. But the most Mike Flores strategy is actually um, tapping out for blue things. Save this. They might have a must counter card. What ridiculous deck is this? Get in, get out. Easy mission. I hope, I hope I didn't screw up. All right, I didn't screw up. Uh, discard two cards. Slip this time. Bet you can't catch us. All right, they're at six life. Can we get there? <laughs> they're at six life. Uh, we resolved a flow, three cards to five. We have like, we can only cast one counter, but we have two. Kaida will draw. Water is so awesome. How do you feel about water? It's just the best. <laughs> There's no secret I can't uncover. We just want to play to protect the Tolarian Terror if we can. I don't know what kind of point removal they would have. 
Sunfall. That answers the question about what point was the point removal at all. Three cards left. We can activate this guy to be a 1-1 one, one and then swing to get a card with Kaido Shizuki, I suppose. We'll obviously block. Ooh, maybe they'll have, like, an Igonjo Seat of Empire. Thanks. I'll be taking that now. Let's see if they have a creature for blocking. Phyrexian Missionary. We'll scatter his rays. And we'll scatter his rays amongst the rays. Um, I don't think we can win this turn. If they're at six, not five. You gonna attack me? They already used Kaido, so I don't think they're gonna attack me. I think I'm free to use Moment here. I need to get like a card draw spell or another counter. That works. I will cast this now. Discard you. And I guess I'll discard this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm just gonna attack. I don't think if it matters. If we attack Kaido, I don't even know if he'd block it. Kind of has to block it. Um, I'm just going to leave up Spell Pierce and um, Fading Hope and Make Disappear and Assimilate Essence. You know, my sweet of counters. We'll be able to, like, rummage one, but then we have, like, a hella lethal Haughty Gen coming back the next turn. A blue ninja. Yep. It's like your defenses aren't even there. Errant and Giada. That's a legend. Do we have two Fading Hopes? No, only one. Alright, so I'm gonna assimilate that. If they pay the four, then we can just bounce it. Or not. I mean, we'll just see what happens, right? I think it's probably worth balancing it. Maybe they have like a removal spell here. Rafine. Okay. Maybe they'll Chumpasaurus Rex here. So we're gonna have Haughty Jin back. Have to block, right? Haughty Jin back with like a thousand interactions. And by a thousand, I mean five blue spells. But I think that's more than enough to beat their hand. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna moment this first. See what happens. Actually, should I just flow? Hmm. Let's moment and see what happens first. So we're putting a spell pierce in the graveyard from that moment, so that should probably single them a certain way. Um, I am going to make this appear with casualty the go for the throat, sacrificing Talarian. If two cards left, we can pay all of it. Presumably, we win the game here. So we can still spell this. So they're going to rummage with this. But they have like a plaza open. 
Uh, so I think we just fading hope them for the game here. Yes, I'm sure. That will resolve. I will keep that. Alright, so they're... Like a weird Esper that... is like Esper Legends, but also has a lot of spells. That's weird. Um, I don't think Disdainful Stroke's that good. They have... They have Shieldred. <sighs> Negate seems pretty good. I think it's weird. It's like they're dudes and spells again. Um, do I just always bring in Blue Sun's Twilight against decks that have Shieldred? Slip good. Like, literally every card in our deck is good. Um, is Blue Sun's Twilight good because they have Shieldred? Maybe? Are they going to max out on... So I think, like, they're going to have a lot of creature kills because they're going to try to play the strategy where they're going to exhaust our creatures. Uh, and if they're trying to exhaust our creatures, then having more threats might be good. If we go to game three, I'm probably going to side in Suspicious Stowaway. Um, is Franklin Pierce good? Yes, because we're on the draw. So I want Franklin Pierce and Make Disappear, I think, on the draw. Is Fading Hope good? It was pretty good that game. I don't think it's great. I think Slip is better than Fading Hope. Negate. We sided in the negate, right? All, like, literally all of our spells are good. Like, I think... We're bringing in Blue Sun Swilo, which is super expensive. Maybe we'll cut Flow. Flow is also bad in the mid-game if they have a Shieldred online, because then you're like, cast Flow and take 10. Um, we're going second. Are there any of these things? I actually want that. All right. I like Franklin Pierce because we're going second, but I'm still going to cut one because I think I need a Blue Suns Twilight. This is a really weird matchup. Like, I don't have any sideboard routines for it because it doesn't resemble any deck that I'm used to. It has elements of both Esper Control and, uh, and uh, regular Esper. All right, so... This is a six-card hand. We need it to get there. The opponent probably kept seven. No help. This is, like, double bad because this card needs additional islands also. <laughs> All right, at least their draw is slow. Give me an island deck. All right, we can make like we're still playing Magic the Gathering. They're going to just play Thalia here or something. It'd be super weird. Phyrexian Missionary, you got it. This is in my hand. This is the Raid Guard. We are officially getting there, friends. For a one-card hand, starting on six? It's going to be hard to complain from here. Phyrexian Missionary number two. Do you think they sided this in? This card seems atrocious. Like, two, three lifelink? I have Talarian Terror in my deck. Um, do we go Haughty Jin? I think we go Haughty Jin and then dare them to play something that matters. We can always just bounce it with Fading Hope. Like, these cards just literally matter zero. Pew, pew! Also, our opponent seems to have stopped making his land drops. Rona's Vortex. Okay. That seems like a really weird time to choose to cast that spell. 
I will Rona's Vortex myself. Ooh, that's very good. So one of the things that was super good about that, outside of just us not losing the Haughty Gen, is that we just put another spell into our graveyard, which makes Talarian Terror one mana cheaper. Uh, and so I am not ready to say that we have deployed the ASPN checkmark, but they better have a heck of a spell next turn, or I feel like ESPN checkmark. A beautiful swamp. So I am going to just try to kill them over the course of three turns, because um, I don't have a good answer to depopulate. Like, and we know that they're like already sun falling or whatever. This play makes no sense to me. I guess they're digging for land. I guess they successfully dug for land. Uh, but that place still doesn't make any sense to me. Let's see, we have six mana. We could use three of it on Hottygen and then Thirst becomes one. Now, I, I also just don't want to use spells on their Rafine, like if they have a Depop. I think they're going to like Rafine and then use the Plaza of Heroes. What should we just... Okay, I'll do that. The reason I was fine with doing that is because we can transform this consider into a, into an island. Um, and so having an island is obviously highly advantageous with flow here. Oh, this is super interesting. We're not getting any... Any islands. I guess eventually you're just going to dig into an island. Um, so I'm just going to attack with this Haughty Gen again. I think their play is going to be um, block with Rafine and then use the Plaza to keep them alive. Wandering Emperor. That's annoying. I'll allow it. I am the Emperor of Kamigawa, and I will protect my people. Like, that was a devastating use of mana for them. Like, um, they didn't get what they needed. We still have the Haughty Gen in play. They have they can't deal with it with sorcery speed removal right now. Um Graphene is quickly going to not be an effective source of defense for them. All these things are true. <clears throat> You're going to run this guy into Talarian Terror? I wonder if they have counter spells. I guess we're about to find out. If they have a counter spell, yep. That's fine. Why is it fine, Michael J? Because it means that we kill them. Are you enjoying the ladder content? Ooh, get to play. Keepable hand. 
What a powerful overlap. Those two things together rarely come up. <laughs> Blue, red. All right. We consider as a spell. I'll keep that. I hope they just don't play a guy with this. I guess we can fade and hope to take a guy. Ooh. This stinks of a deck that is going to fight us with Lithomantic Barrage after sideboarding. So even if we get game one, it's going to be increasingly tough. Um, I just don't want to tip them off that we're one threat down. So you're unlikely to see that. Um, that Talarian Terror, it's at the bottom of our library. Putting it at the bottom of the library is pretty much the same as putting it in the graveyard. So, ooh, flow is insane. It's insane, but it doesn't help us right now. Franklin Pierce does, though. Take Franklin Pierce. Tough spot for the opponent. Um, most of the spells that they have, they can kill. Potagen are pretty bad against the Fading Hope. I'm not going to attack. Hmm. We'll discard Blue Sun's Twilight and Fading Hope is our only cover spell. And this. All right, so we have an exposed Haughty Gin. Officially exposed. We did get to resolve Flow, so we should be in good shape. Theoretically. <clears throat> All right, I'll attack now. What did they discard to big score Brotherhood's End? What kind of deck are they? What kind of person casts a big score discarding Brotherhood's End? That time they discarded Fable. Maybe we should have let that resolve and then just countered their answer. Okay. They're going to bring in Lithomantic Barrage. But they seem like the kind of maniacs who we can change the equation. Uh, Disdainful Stroke, Negate, all have text. Um, Slip is going to... This is like the all-time best matchup for Slip. Because... It's like one of the only cards we have that's good against with Romantic Barrage. This should be great, necessary evil. We're resolving this is obviously insane. It was good. We resolved it there. This is our way to win. Do they even have dudes? Um, I'm going to make the assumption they don't have a lot of dudes. Could leave in Scatter Ray, because I think they probably have Reckoner Bank Busters. Uh, so that's probably pretty good. Actually, Blue Sun's Twilight is great against Fables. Scatter, Ray, Negate. Make Disappear. Fading Hope. Fading Hope is, like, pretty good against Fables. We have these Blue Sun's Twilights against Fables. It's also good for saving our guys. Consider Can't Cut. Franklin Pierce, we're going to be on the draw. I think that's probably necessary this is going to be good this is going to be good this is the point of our deck this is going to be good i think scatter ray eligible for cut all of these cards are sacrosanct and we need to cut four franklin the games are going to go long franklin pierce is going to be less good going long All right, 
This is dodgy. Maybe we'll just win with Blue Sun's Twilight. How about that? We can also bury them under flow. Like, it doesn't matter if you have drawn Lithomantic Barrage if you get buried under flow. All right. I'm guessing we have more Haughty Gens in our opening hand than they have Lithomantic Barrages. <laughs> just a guess. I like planes. Give me an island. Considers like an island. It's like an island that makes Solarian terror cheap. Excellent. Excellent. Plans all coming together. I'm not going to cast Moment of Truth. That would have left us open to Wandering Emperor. I'll cast it this turn, though. I do need land. Land. Land in the graveyard, tear on the bottom. So again, bottom of the deck and graveyard are basically the same. Uh, the main difference, like, so our deck doesn't shuffle. So, like, if we see this Talarian Terror, it's only because we got to the actual bottom of our graveyard. Um, I think, do we give him something to shoot at here? We can do that. Um, we have two more. So, uh, what you put in your graveyard with Moment of Truth is like, it could be a tell, it could be, and it could be something else. It could be, um, just like making instants and sorceries for Chalarian Terror. I don't really think this guy's going to go all the way. <laughs> Guess we'll find out. Destroy evil. Okay. a sucker. If they have a sweeper, they have destroy the uh, disdainful stroke. They need to have like a sweeper plus negate to punish us on this. Otherwise we just kill them. I don't even know why I did that. They can negate us here and the wandering of oh, I guess it kills this haughty gen. Alright. Big sweeps or no? Franklin Pierce? I was gonna moment. Ooh, we get to play first and have a keepable hand. It's it's like Christmas, but Christmas is red and green, and we're the opposite of red. So go figure. Oh, they are red. Phoenix chick. Worst matchup on earth for us. Ooh, okay. Time to see. Time to see how just how good we are. Hopefully, we're really good.
Swifty J. Their second land was uh, Mistress Foundry, so they weren't going to get any action off of that anyway. So they're on one spell, we're on 18. One spell again, probably. Yeah, we're going to counter the one spell. This is going to bring this casting cost down to three. It's it's arguable we, we should have binned this second Talarian Terror. All right, Phoenix Chick against the world, am I right? What do we want? A Consider would be great. I would take a Moment of Truth. I would take a Land. Land for Flow. Swifty J. Taylor Swifts. 16. Said I'd take a moment of truth. Didn't want to lie to you. Uh, I will take Franklin Pierce. Put this in the graveyard. Put this at the bottom. So we're in a spot now. Maybe we should have taken the island. But like, we're in this spot now that we're like invincible on the ground. We're, we're like on a 16 turn clock. That changes. Jeez, who is that card? Alright, we need to draw a land or like a counter spell for the Shivan Devastator. I'll take a land. They're gonna come in with everything. It's a weird game. We need this guy to not beat us by itself. A lot to make these guys not just be horrible. This will put us to four. Do we let him die? I think we let him die. Four and they have that Devastator. This is so tough. Not good enough. Good enough. Okay. Graveyard. Library. This is really tight. They have Devastator and X. Potentially put us to three, and they can attack on the ground with multiple things. Come on, o. Do we have to let that hit us? Like, if we Franklin Pierce the Kamano, they're just gonna pay, right? This is super tight. That puts us to two. Dead to multiple things on the ground. That's what we needed. That's what we needed and we still might lose. 
Okay. That beats that. We need them to not have two lethal cards. Thirsty adversary. Franklin Pierce, that. Just live through this turn. No blockers, right? Wow, that was tight. It's only because they drew three Mistress Foundry. If they drew, like, a reasonable number of regular lands, probably would have beaten us. Uh, okay, change the equations are all coming in. We can... Do less flows. Slip. This is good. Franklin Pierce saved our butt. Blue Sun's Twilight. I mean, do I want any of their dudes? I guess I would take Felden. It's like the only one that I want. Or like Squee. Those are guys I would take. Um... I need to cut three cards. I already cut a flow. Don't want to cut any guys. Maybe cut one. I mean, I've cut a flow and a thirst. Just note those. I think, like, if we're bringing in four, change the equation, then, four, then two make disappear, get expendable. Does that make sense? They have, like... Half dudes. Actually, I think I would rather have make disappear than negate. Let's go with this. If I lose, then we'll consider different for game three. This is a dodgy hand. You're always just playing catch up in this matchup. It's not so fun from the other side, I gotta tell you. I like it from that side muchly. But from this side. Not so much. Do we even have time to cast this? We're just going to get run over before we can cast any of our spells. They're going to come in for like at least six next turn. Ugh. This is feeling a little slow. This is pathetic. Oh, that was pathetic. Maybe our hand was completely unkeepable. I mean, maybe I'm beating myself up too much, right? Like, how do you even beat that draw? I think that, um, like, control decks are, again, worth control, at least in context of the matchup, are, like, horrendous against the red deck draws where they just draw all one drops. And they can cast them, right? So, like, this hand has resistance to a one drop, right? It has spell pierce for Kamano faces Kakazan. Uh, we have action. We're going to, our first five mana is probably committed. Would really like to draw a Talarian Terror. Ooh, 
that was a gift. Play with fire. That was pretty predictable. <clears throat> Ooh, take that all day to the bank. And we drew a land. Heck yeah. No thank you, no sir. We can get browned if they have Squee here, though. What is this casting cost going to be? So we have two in the graveyard already. It'll be three in the graveyard, so this will be casting cost four. I'll take it. Especially they're on three cards. Just give me something to throw. If they just throw a burn spell, I'm gonna spell pierce it. Alright, this is now casting cost three, so we can cast it next turn. Is it a Raiju? Devastator. Ugh, we might still get just beat by this Devastator. That's a three-turn clock, assuming they don't just burn us out. Clock. I think that was a mistake. Why would they make that attack? Lightning Strike. Let them pay the ward. I actually think slipping is better here. Okay. Do we attack? I'm not going to attack because if we give him a free shot with the Mistress Foundry, that, that takes a turn off the clock. to let that land. It's our last card in hand, though. Give me an answer to Shivan Devastator. Five cards. We have good answers. Very good answers. This is going to be tight, but I think we got it. Dubious Monarch. Resolve. Who do we let it resolve? It's our only card, right? Maybe you can counter it. Graveyard. Library. Counter There'll be no attacks this turn, friends. Very good. If we attack here, are we dead? No attacks. It's going to make them commit to playing a creature. So they have two things, and we have more than two counters.
that does not kill us. Woo! Beat the best matchup. I mean, the worst matchup. I mean, you know, the best deck. Love Mono Red. Love, love beating Mono Red <laughs> even more. All right, here's the post-game wrap. Just a few matches, best of three matches, uh, with what I'm calling Moment Blue. So um, that was just Platinum on the ladder, so uh, it was just the first day back out. Hope you enjoyed those matches. Um, I thought that the Blue-Green match, the Poison match, uh, could that is like exactly the kind of match that you could lose on the second turn. Um, green decks can get on the battlefield, or they can deploy something like a single Poison counter even when they have Proliferate or, um, you know, Venerable Rot Priest, that you just can't win the game at all. So uh, it was actually, I think, a good illustration of how this deck really works from a philosophical basis, which is um, if you fall behind, <laughs> try to catch up, and then kill them real quick with uh, Haughty Jin. Um, you know, and then we beat up on some mid-range decks, beat up on some Phyrexians and... I don't even remember what else we, we put up. It was five minutes ago that, that I was playing the last match. So uh, I really like the stack. Uh, I think that if you want to play best of one, probably maybe do a best of one event or something this week with this deck. I think it's better in best of one, mono blue in general, than in best of three, just because of Lithomantic Barrage. So we played against that Jeskai deck. Um, I, I have Jeskai as one of my decks on rotation for... Uh, for playing on the ladder, and I have four Lithomantic Barrage in that deck, mostly for this deck, right? So Lithomantic Barrage is also good against Thalia, right? It's a one-mana spell that you can cast that kills Thalia and a deck of all spells. But, um, like, they cast it on Talarian Terror, and <laughs> he just dies. I didn't even pay the ward. Uh, anyway, I hope you like those matches. Um, I think this deck is very competitive. Uh, it didn't It didn't gain a lot of things that dramatically changed its character but i do think that some of the upgrades are very interesting so uh if you want to give mono blue a chance or you know go back to mono blue if you've given it a chance in the past uh the upgrades twitter are, are not very expensive so like assimilate essence is a common uh, you might have already been playing scatter ray and moment of truth is a common so um it's not an expensive deck to upgrade if you already have the deck but if you do need to upgrade it or maybe you're saying to yourself, Michael J., I love this deck so much, I'm going to play it in paper. I'm going to play it in f and I need to order some Haughty Gins. Well, if you need to order some Haughty Gins, you know where to get them, coolstuffinc.com. And while you're there, use the promo code FLORES, F-L-O-R-E-S, for 5% off anything in the store. Could be Haughty Gin, could be something else. Maybe Blue Sun's Twilight, which is also a rare. Uh, but, you know, Flores... That's the promo code. See you in the next video.